Let's dive right in. Today we're breaking down this simple animation of a carbon nanotube rolling up from a graphene sheet. As usual, there are timestamps embedded below. We're going to start by grabbing the default cube, hitting X and deleting it. From there, I'll go ahead and hit Shift A to add in a simple plane. I'm going to hit F2 and rename this carbon nanotube, or CNT for short. From here, I'll tab into edit mode, right click and choose subdivide. For today, I'll go with a grid of smaller hexagons, so I'll hit Shift R three times to repeat the subdivision. If I tab back into object mode and zoom in just a little bit, I can come to the modifier properties and in order, I'm going to add a triangulate modifier and a subdivision surface modifier of one. I will then apply both of these. And returning to edit mode, first I'll hit seven on my number pad so I can come into a top view. Then I'm very simply going to select any center vert in the middle of one of these hexagons, like so. I'll hit Shift G and choose Amount of Connecting Edges, and then X and Dissolve Vertices. I'll then do the same thing for the verts between points. So grab one, Shift G, Amount of Connecting Edges, X and Dissolve Vertices. From here, I'm very simply going to hit A to select everything, R, Z, and minus 45 to rotate, then S, Y, and 0.6 to get nice, perfect hexagons. And this is going to be the basis of the graphene sheet that we will roll up into a carbon nanotube. This next part is key for the animation. You need to choose the right faces to make a seamless array in the X and Y directions. We'll start with an arbitrary square and adjust as needed. So Alt A to deselect everything, 3 for face select, and again, an arbitrary square trying to make it roughly even. Something like this should be just fine. I'll hit Control I and then choose X and delete faces. From here, I'm going to tab back into object mode, hit Z and come to a wireframe view. I'll then go ahead and add an array modifier in the X direction. You can see I don't have the perfect offset that I was hoping for, so I'm going to modify my original graphene sheet to do that. I'll simply tab into edit mode, and if I select this top face here, hold down control, and that will snap all of these together, then I can hit X and delete these faces. Now I have the ability to perfectly get these to mesh into one another. So to do that, I'm very simply going to explore whatever value that I need to make this happen. I'll hold down shift and then just drag this value slightly to the left until it pretty much overlaps perfectly. If you really want to get fine tuned, then you can hold shift B and then just drag in until you can see the seam more or less correct. Then I'm going to enable the merge option so that each of these is seamlessly connected. We're then going to do the same thing for the Y. So I'll simply add a second array modifier. I'll change the X factor to zero and the Y factor to one. Again, you can see that this is more or less correct. I'm going to have the faces that I need, and I don't know that there will be a gap. There will be a gap there, so I'm going to have to correct that. Again, I'm going to simply select these bottom faces here, X, and delete the faces. Now I have the perfect pattern to mesh in, and I can simply drag this value down as I did before. Again, you're going to want to do this in wireframes so that you can see this seam more or less perfectly connect. And if you're finding it's just not quite going in the increments you want, then you can explore the value. So I'm going to go with 0.9 let's say 3.5 to start. That's very, very close. We can lower that just a little bit, 3.933, and that's gonna be perfect. This will vary every time depending on what your original lattice size is. So you're gonna to have to explore the values just a bit. I'll then go ahead, click Merge, and now we have the basis of our effect. Essentially, what these two arrays are going to allow us to do is control the number of segments that we're going to wrap into the tube on one axis, probably the X for our case, and then the other will control the length of the tube in terms of the Y axis. For now, what we can do is very simply collapse both of these and we can add a simple wireframe modifier, making sure that we enable the boundary and we'll tap back into object mode to see all this. I like my wireframe to be a little bit thinner, so I'll decrease the thickness down to 0.01. And I can also add a bevel modifier to smooth that out. I'll go with two segments. And for this case, I think I want an amount of 0 0.0025. We zoom in. Right click, Shade Smooth, that's going to give us the nice lattice that we're looking for. And this is pretty good. Now, when you're working with this in terms of animation and also rolling up the tube, it's best to disable both the wireframe and the bevel, or at least the bevel, because it's going to add a lot of extra geometry. Similarly, we can remove the extra array because we're not going to need it right now. With all that done, we can start making our spiral. To start, come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and we're going to look for the Add curve extra objects. With this box checked, we can return to the viewport, hit Shift A, come to curve, and we're gonna go all the way down to curve spirals and add in an Archimedean spiral. From here, I'm going to open the submenu and I'm going to increase the height by exactly one tick mark. That's going to let us see where the ends are. 
I'm going to very simply grab this absolute end piece, hit X and delete it. Then I'll come to a top view and just offsetting a bit, I will grab this piece right here, hit E, Y and extrude in that direction. This is essentially going to be the runway. Our tube will follow this as it wraps up around this spiral. While still in edit mode, I'll hit A to select everything, S, Z, and zero to snap everything into one axis. And if we were to hit three for side view, you can see we're just above zero here. So I'm going to hit N and make sure that the whole curve is resting perfectly on the axes right there. Finally, we'll come into a top view, hit G, X, hold down control, and we're just going to move this until this bottom vert snaps exactly on the axes. Now we'll tab back into object mode, hit R, Y, and 90 degrees, and that's going to give us our runway. We'll also hit control A and we'll apply this rotation. We can now turn back to our graphene sheet. I'm going to select it and add a curve modifier. From there, I'm going to make sure that I move the curve modifier above the wireframe. That's very important. And for the curve object, I'm going to select the spiral. Now this first array that I created is essentially going to allow me to add segments until I can more or less complete this spiral. What I'd like to do is figure out where these are going to meet perfectly along the axes, right here along the X axes. So I will select my CNT object, hit G, X, and start moving until I am unraveling along the runway. Something like this is pretty much perfect. I can then move it back until I have just about this right here. What I'm looking for is the leading edge to be touching the axes. Then if the object is too big or if the number of array segments is not going to perfectly match, what I can do is I can just grab my spiral and scale it down. So I'm going to scale until these pieces are essentially just perfectly matching, just about there. And to get rid of the nasty little scene that we have here, we're very simply going to select our CNT object. We're going to add a weld modifier and we're going to move it above the wireframe and under the curve. If we can increase this distance from 0.01 to point or 0.001 to 0.1, then you can see that that is going to fix our problem right here pretty much perfectly. And we're going to have a very clean object. At this stage, I like to parent the CNT object to the spiral. So I simply select the carbon nanotube, hold down shift, grab my spiral, hit control P and parent to object. This is going to let me scale everything at once by simply scaling the spiral. So if I want, I can make this smaller or larger, and it's not going to mess up any of the curve profiles or any of the tracking. It also will maintain the size of the graphene network unless I start applying scale. At this stage, I could enable our second array modifier and use it to control the length of our carbon nanotube. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to hide this in the viewport during the animation so everything runs a little bit more smoothly. Then I'll collapse this, and very simply to animate this, I'm going to, on frame one, my perfect nanotube in place, select it, hit I, and add a location keyframe. For a three second animation at 24 frames per second, or 72 frames, I'll jump ahead to frame 72, then very simply hit G, X, and I'm going to move my carbon nanotube until it unravels along that runway that I created. From there, once I've got it in a good place, I'll go ahead, hit I, and add a location keyframe. Now, if I were to play this from the beginning, you could see I have an animation of a carbon nanotube unraveling. If instead I would like for the animation to wrap this up, what I'm going to do instead is very simply come down to this animation bar. I'll grab the frame that is on one, and you can tell that you only have one selected if this is yellow and this is white and I'll just move it off somewhere into the distance. Then I will grab the frame at 72 and move it to be my starting frame at frame one. We'll finally move this back to frame 72. And if we reset the whole thing, we can now see if we zoom in our nice animation of a graphene sheet rolling up into a seamless carbon nanotube. And when it gets to that final point, everything stitches together nicely. Just to show this with the full thing, we'll enable the array. We'll add a few extra segments. Let's go up to nine. And if I go ahead and press play, we can see a full graphene sheet rolling up into a nice carbon nanotube with a seamless fitting at the end. And of course, if you had the bevel enabled, it will slow down things just a little bit. When we zoom in, everything is nice and smooth. So if you want, this works with essentially any size of graphene sheet. The array will control the number of segments that you have around it, and you can use bigger or smaller hexagons. You'll just have to change the number of array segments that you're using. You can also, of course, change the scale of your spiral, and that will impact, again, how many segments you want. If you want a finer tube, i.e. a lower mesh density or a higher mesh density for the number of hexagons. This animation was inspired by something that I came across recently in a research presentation. In the future, I'll likely revisit this tutorial with the fields version of Geometry Nodes that is coming later this year. 
That promises to be very modular and to make the workflow much more flexible, but for now I thought this was a fun and simple effect that could be easily created in Blender, and you could export this to all kinds of other applications. For the time being, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. As always, many thanks to my supporters on Patreon who helped make these tutorials possible. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.